Hello, I'm Sally Pointer. Now, I might be looking even scruffier than I usually do in this video, and that's because the project I'm working on today is really quite a messy one. Uh, a lot of you will know that I'm currently doing a Master of Science in Experimental Archaeology over at Exeter University. And as part of that, I'm taking the opportunity to explore one of my favourite research interests, which is the history and archaeology of soap. So I've got some big experiments to do for that, but also I'm going to take it as the opportunity to start putting together a sequence of videos for you on how soap is made from scratch. And by from scratch, I mean starting with the ashes and starting with the raw fats. So today I'm setting up a lye hopper to make lye from wood ashes, which we'll use as the alkali source in soap making. Historically, lye hoppers have been made out of things like hollowed out tree trunks or slats of wood or potentially large pots. I've got a small plastic dustbin here, brand new one, nothing murky in there. And that's going to make a really nice, safe lye hopper. Now, what I need to do is drill a hole around about here that's large enough to take a bung and that will let me stack this full of ashes, pour water through it and get the lie out safely afterwards. So first things first, take this into the workshop, drill some holes in it and find a bung. So I've marked the um, bucket a few inches above the bottom. I want room for a little bit of a filter in the bottom section and I'm planning on putting in one of these rubber bungs, the sort that you'd use for a homebrew demijohn. Now, Drill butts. Um, I'm a little bit limited in options, so I found this slightly rusty one. I'm not convinced it's absolutely the right bit for the job, but we're going to try it and see. Well, that works. Will it take the... Uh, that's actually a little bit small. That's all right. I'm going to try again with a slightly bigger one and um, by putting the phone down as well, we'll see if we can get this to fit in a second. Well, the other drill bits aren't the right size either. So I'm going to use a half round um, rasp and I'm just going to file that away until it fits. This may take some time. Success. So. I've aimed for quite a tight fit, but with plenty that I can pull out later when I'm ready to tap the lie off. Let's get this out in the garden and get it set up. So out in the garden, in the corner where I keep my tea plantation, not looking very great at the moment, but they'll pick up, and the spare bits of quernstones. I have got a little corner where I can set this up safely and nobody's gonna knock it over. I'm setting the lie hopper up on top of a support, so I'll be able to put a pan underneath it when it's time to tap it off and if we have a look at it from the inside up to about this level I want to put in a layer of twigs that will act as a filter that's going to help stop the ashes clogging the hole up so that means that I need to nip over to my lovely neighbour's woods and collect some sticks. We have historical records that talk about putting withies in the bottom of the hopper when you're producing lye. So I've come out to this lovely stand of coppice and I'm going to take out some little twigs for various purposes, but lining my new lye hopper is high on my list of priorities today. Uh, it took a few seconds. Let's see how far that little armful goes. I can always come back over the road for more. Now, because I'm me, I'm multitasking. I actually want some of these long bits to make new sprang frames. So I'm going to pick out the good bits and all the trimmings are going to go into the bottom of the lie hopper. So that's another four sprang frames made. Those are for weaving on and nothing to do with soap making. But hey, why not make two things at once? And the bottom of my lie hopper now has quite a thick mesh of twigs in it and you can just see the stopper down there. Now ideally I want to stop the ashes clogging 
that. So I think I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I've got some wood shavings to hand and I'm going to put a layer of nice curly shavings over the top. Straw would work just as well. I haven't got any to hand so this is standing in for straw. And that's about an inch of, I think it's wood wool is what you'd call this. It's standing in for straw. So straw would be the ideal. I don't want to stop the liquid dripping through but I do want to stop things clogging up too badly. Now we need to put in the ashes. When we moved here several years ago we actually brought an entire bin of ashes with us. Now they've been outside for that entire time but because they've been covered they should be absolutely fine. They're what we're going to use today. When I've experimented with making wood ash lie before what we found is that you do need to use quite a lot to get a decent result. Just doing a, oh, I don't know, uh, a scoopful or two like this really isn't enough. You need to use a really good volume of ashes. So I'm gonna fill up this hopper as high as it will go. Do watch that you're not breathing in too much ash as you transfer it. And I'm going to be interested to see what the quality of this is like. As, as I mentioned, these ashes travelled with us. And they're certainly well aged. There's no reason why they shouldn't be good. They've been protected. But I think the ones nearest the bottom of the barrel probably going to be the best ones still. These just came out of a domestic wood burner and they would have been burning a mixture of oak, ash, beech, birch, there would have been odds and ends perhaps of conifers, but mostly they're British hardwoods. That's what was being burnt in that particular wood burner. Oh, this quantity is about right. It's pretty much going to use up my stash of ashes, which is brilliant. So I'm going to take those right up to the top. And I'm going to make just a little well in the middle and then we'll start adding some water. Uh, that's the point at which we find out whether that bung really is going to hold or not. We're going to need lots and lots of water and I've got a really big rain butt here so we're using rain water for this particular experiment. Although I'm not planning on tapping off the lie till tomorrow, it's a really good idea to put a container underneath from the word go in case it leaks and make sure that nothing that you are using is based on aluminium because lye is a strong alkali, it's going to dissolve aluminium. There are my ashes, I've made a well in the middle. Let's start pouring in some water and it's going to take a lot of water. I'm going to need several watering cans full. So we'll take our time. We're going to let it percolate through nice and slowly and I'm going to keep topping it up until it just won't take any more water at all. As that water settles in, there's lots of burping and glooping and things rising to the top. Little bubbles of wood tar and things just dissolving into that alkali solution. As long as you don't disturb the filter layer, you can give it a good poke around, make sure the water's settling in and just keep topping it up until the water doesn't soak in anymore. That's two watering cans full so far. I think it's time for another one. It's got real witch's cauldron properties. This has lovely bubbles. This is just the air pockets releasing as the water soaks through the ashes. There's actually nothing really dramatic going on, although the liquid is becoming more and more alkali as the ashes leach. 
That's got three and a half watering cans, so three and a half gallons of water in there at the moment. I think it's probably going to take a bit more, but I'm going to go away and have some lunch and just let it settle. That will also give me a chance to check whether it's leaking by that stage. I really hope not. The odd drip, no problem. Lots. Mm. And then we will decide whether it's ready to be left overnight or not. Lid on, just to make sure nobody sticks their fingers in it. Although there should be nobody around but me, mum and the cats today. And uh, yes, time for some lunch. Half an hour later and there's no doubt that that is still settling. Now I'm curious as to whether after just half an hour or so there's much chemical activity going on in there. So I've got some universal indicator papers. I'm just going to test the rainwater to make sure that that's neutral. That is, that's not really doing anything. Whilst I'm not expecting a lot of alkalinity yet, I'm hoping that this is going to read, yes, look at that. That's reading, it's nice and alkaline. So eh, if I can rearrange this so that you can see the pH indications, come on. So that is already really lovely and strongly alkali. That's only going to get better overnight, we hope. I'm going to top up the water. I'm going to put the lid on. It's not leaking. It's not leaking. That's really exciting. And tomorrow morning, we're going to see what it's turned into. It's first thing the next morning and I came out with some nervousness. But look at that, just the tiniest little bit of dripping. So I'm really pleased with that. Every single batch of lye that you make will tend to come out differently. And in this case, I was thinking about it later, thought actually that rasp I used to enlarge the bunghole will have made for a less than perfect seal. So I was awake in the middle of the night fretting about this. Seems to have worked all right though. I am gonna leave it for a few more hours. It was vaguely lunchtime that I set this up yesterday. So I will wait till after lunch before tapping it off. So it's had a full 24 hours. And what we're hoping for is for all those ashes that are inside to have leached the potassium oxides and hydroxides into the water. That's going to give us something that's very, very similar to potassium hydroxide, KOH in chemical terms, which should be a good base life soap making. So 24 hours has gone past now and it's time to look at tapping off this lye. Now, I'm often a little bit lax with health and safety when it's just me. I try to be quite careful if I'm teaching. For me, not so much. But I am going to be taking some precautions today. I've got an apron on. Can you hear that? More interesting things to do than housework, always. I've got specs on. If I didn't wear specs already, I'd probably use goggles. I've got sensible shoes on. And I'm going to put some gloves on because lye is really nasty stuff if you get on the wrong side of it. Now, I'm attempting to use a tripod today and it keeps collapsing on me. So if this suddenly goes out of focus, we'll treat it as a comedy moment. Okay, let's pull this bung. There. And that is a really good example of why we have to be careful with this. Oh dear. There was a lot more of a head of pressure there than I was expecting. Okay, that's settled down to a steady trickle already. I'm going to just let it keep dripping for as long as it wants to, hopefully without running all over the place. I'm going to go and wash my hands. I did splash lie up my arms when I did that. And when I come back, 
I think we'll be able to do an initial test and see how strong this lye is coming out. I have no idea what to expect. As I said before, this is very old ash that I've used for this particular batch, but it's looking right so far. Shame about the comedy moment where it splashed everywhere. All right, moment of truth. Let's see what we've actually got here. So, I can use universal indicator paper like I did earlier on in this experiment, but all that really tells us is whether something is strongly alkali or not. It's actually very, very hard to judge accurately whether a wood ash lye is strong enough to make soap with or not. So there are traditional methods of estimating the relative strength. And one of those is by floating an egg in it. So this is our wood ash lye. I'll just tap that off. It's very murky still, needs to settle. This is a batch of wood ash lye with a little slaked lime in it. Or it was quick lime when it went in. Slaked, but it was wood ash and lime. Strong enough to float an egg. This is something you see over and over again in traditional soap making manuals. Is the lye strong enough to float an egg? This is plain water as our control. And here are our eggs. So if I put an egg into water, it will sink as long as it's a fresh egg. That's a very well known way of checking whether your eggs are still good. A lot of us will float eggs quite regularly if we can't remember how long we've had them for. If I take that same egg and put it into the lye that was made with a little lime, can you see that is floating really, really nicely with a little section sticking out on top. It's often described as a bit about the size of a coin, although coins vary hugely in size. I haven't actually tried ours yet. I don't know what it's going to be like. So I'm just going to, just going to rinse that off in the fresh water so that we're not confusing things. What do you reckon? Is it going to be strong enough? Is it going to be really, really weak? I genuinely don't know. Oh, it's sinking a little bit. Is it going to float back up? Oh, oh, it's thinking about it. It's thinking about it. Let me see if I can move this so that you can see what's going on inside. Let me try moving the tripod around. No, that has pretty much sunk. I was hoping it was going to be a little more than that. It's not quite sitting right on the bottom. It's got a little bit more oomph to it than that. I don't know if you can see that egg was moving around quite slowly, but that's not quite at soap making strength yet. However, it is definitely stronger than the plain water. That's absolutely fine. That's going to give me something to work with when I start trying to estimate what's going on. Can you see that against the light? You can see that that egg's not quite sitting on the bottom. So that's actually a really, really good sign. I'm just gonna rescue the egg. Other things I can do to estimate how this is feeling are a little riskier. I do not recommend you do this at home unless you are quite confident in handling lye. So the first thing is, I've got no gloves on, I'm just gonna see what it feels like. Strong lye feels soapy in the fingers because it's degreasing your fingers pretty much straight away. That feels, yeah, that feels slightly soapy. The next thing I can do is taste it. And you've gotta be very, very careful when you do this. Now, I'm always very cautious when I do a taste test on raw lye that I have got no idea what the strength is. I fell very foul of this once, quite a few years ago. I made a batch of lye, just like we have now. It came through without all the spilling everywhere. It was looking really promising, but I was convinced it was gonna be weak. So I picked up a drop on my finger and I put it on my tongue and my tongue nearly fell off. So I've learned the hard way that we do this very, very cautiously. So what I'm going to do, oh, sorry about the funny angle. I am going to get a drop of lye on my finger. I am going to pat it around so that it's just a trace. And then I'm just gonna tip it to the very, very end of my tongue. Yep, 
does got bite. Um, I can tell that that's quite strongly alkali. It really makes your tongue screw up on itself and your tongue is very, very sensitive to acids and alkalis. It's quite a good way of testing. But again, yeah, that's strong, but it's not quite at soap making strength. This is excellent for the purposes that I want, for the experiments that I want to be running for my master's degree, but also for the ongoing soap making videos that I want to make for you lovely people. This is perfect because I wanted some slightly less strong lye to start with. What I'm going to be doing from here is I'm going to finish letting this lye drip through. Then I'm going to decant it into demijohn so it can settle. There's lots of little floating particles in there at the moment. So I want those to settle out. And lye often does get better if you can keep it for a while. You, you end up with much cleaner soap, a much better quality product. And then I'm going to put some by for the experiments that I need to do, which I will tell you more about in another video. But for the moment, let's just talk about making lye. And then when we come to actually make soap with this, I'm going to reduce it by boiling, by evaporation, so that the lye concentrates and will keep going until it's strong enough to float an egg. But I think you're probably going to be seeing a bit more of that in another video. This has gone on quite long enough for the moment. So to recap, making lye, you want a good size hopper of ashes. Just a few spoonfuls doesn't really work. Good quality ashes from hardwood bases are perfect. There are other ashes you can use in soap making. Again, I will talk more about those in another video, but generally salt, salty ashes and seashore plants are a different kettle of fish altogether. Top it up with water, give it a good 24 hours, drain it off, being careful, learn from my mistake. I shouldn't really have had that big gush of lye earlier. And then test it, initially at least, by seeing whether it's strong enough to float an egg. There is going to be a whole sequence of videos on working with lye, working with fats, making soap of various types based on historical things. There's also going to be at least one video based on my master's level research on what we think is happening when soap is first discovered, because there's a lot of theories out there. Most of them we can prove don't work in practice. It's a lot of fun. Lots of potions. So I'll sign off for the moment and I will be back hopefully in the next few weeks with the next instalment of this. Bye for now.